Um, I saw that you were using the hashtag time to talk and um, yeah. how do you think your play illuminates something about mental health? I think it has a lot to say about mental health in, in shy people because essentially what Callum's journey is, is it's a journey of self-acceptance and it's a journey of hope. So by the end of the play, even though he imagines himself in the future, in possibly the worst case scenario of his future, he's able to bring himself up out of it because he, he knows who he is and he has a self-acceptance of his shyness and his introversion. And if he fails at becoming a successful writer, at least he would have tried and gone against the societal norms and the societal expectations. Um, there's this phrase I actually saw, because um, often there's a lot of talk about like toxic masculinity, and yeah. then there's often plays of gender and the thing, but to me actually what's more harmful, and this is my own conclusion, is toxic positivity. Yeah. So, um, but there's something about the atmosphere of parties where you will not just talk about how you're actually going to die. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's quite a poignant moment in the play where he says, you know, I, I, parties are utterly pointless um, because you can't have intellectual nuanced debates, you can't mm. have um, really important conversations. Um, and he's, also being open about and also being mood open, yeah, yeah. as well. And I think... The spectrum of yeah, human existence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that, that kind of... Yeah, in a way there's a taboo in our society to actually, if you went to a party and you took someone aside and said, you know what, I'm having a really bad day, and yeah. uh, there's a kind of taboo against that, you're having a party, you need to have a good time. Yeah. And I think in the play Callum challenges that because it's essentially people putting on a front to how they really feel yeah. and what they're really thinking. Yeah. Uh, it's people trying to be something that they're not, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And you, so you, you're touring the play all across the UK yeah. and um, you just, I, I saw that you started in Newcastle. Do you find in different parts of the country there's parts of the play uh, people laugh at or recognise and parts of the play people don't, such as when you're in Essex today or London? Um, I actually found when I was watching the film Black Panther in like a black majority area there'd be whole jokes I'd laugh at and when I watched it in like a white majority area there'd be whole jokes people wouldn't laugh at and then thinking how Newcastle's represented it like by like Geordie Shaw and like this yeah. sort of thing I just wondered if you'd in some way you're uh, being attuned to sort of geography of Britain which yeah, is, yeah yeah um, yeah it's interesting you say that it's something that I'm still kind of working out as we as we go along the tour but yeah we do have different responses from different areas but I think what's great about the play is that a lot of people do identify with the different characters in the play and with Callum's story. Um, so what's wonderful is that we can go to places like Newcastle and there are a lot of jokes in it which refer to kind of the south of England yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and actually to still have a kind of acknowledgement from being so far up north it has been really wonderful. Um, what we've found is, so far is that wherever we go people are still moved by the play and they're still thinking about the play afterwards. Um, I suppose maybe our biggest reaction was probably London, because a lot of the jokes in there are kind of uh, refer to London. Michael was also a Londoner. And Michael was a Londoner, yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess our biggest reaction was there. Um, but it's interesting, I found, like, different places seem to take different things from it. Being in Harlow, people have found it a very moving experience, whereas maybe being in Newcastle, it was a bit more funny. It was a, the kind of comedy was brought out a bit more. I think that's it's interesting with the journey of the play, how some places will see it as a funnier play than others, and some places will see it as a more moving play. Yeah, because I'm from a like an Islamic background and a Bengali background, I have this point of alterity or an alternative identity where all those values are turned on its head. So it's just um, all the way my, I know, my my father's biography or like um, so. I know I think like these things are seen as like normative like I know western mode of sexuality or dating like but actually the majority of the world doesn't actually go in along the same lines um, and yeah. and so uh, yeah um, and then you brought in North Korea and Iran and then it was like you know like there's these alternative ways of mapping the world or yeah. thinking about um, I find a lot of ways in which religion is pathologized or like yeah. piety is pathologized or like Muslim communities are pathologised. I mean, I, know, I always felt like growing up as, as a Bengali Muslim, like Bengali films, mm. they're, they're not like Bollywood films, they're like these really slow, Satyajit Ray, they're like really slow, meditative, introvert films. And like, um, 
Yeah, so I think it's like I had something else to alter. I mean, there is a point in which you talk about the cis uh, white male yeah, thing and how it's white thing, male, yeah, yeah. and how how do you think that intersects with the shy identity? Um, yeah, well, um, I guess I guess the I guess the main thing about what Callum is trying to say is 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 essentially be true to yourself. Yeah, yeah. And if you are a shy introverted person, be true to your shyness yeah. and your own introversion. Um, I suppose what's what's interesting with Callum is that he. He believes that there's no God, so yeah, he's yeah. very much an atheist. Um, he he says that he's a cisgendered it's white child. I, I, I was, oh no, sorry. Yeah. When I was a teenager, I also didn't believe in God. And yeah. I, I disbanded to a religion. And then when I came into my shy acceptance, rather than feeling inferior or, or inferior, I actually became more interested in theology. Because if you think of the Quaker movement, like I was bullied for being quiet, right? Yeah. And it's like the Quaker movement, being silent and quiet is the highest attainment of connection with God. So it yeah. turns the high school values on its head. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, and just places like cathedrals are just the complete alternative of... Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. I think it's interesting for Callum as well because he's at that age where he's, he's 17 and, you know, like he's thinking ahead for, like, university and he's probably at quite an angry mm. state of his... He's kind yeah. of angry at the world, I think, yeah. for misunderstanding yeah. him for so long. Yeah. Um, so maybe those ideas of like there's definitely no God and these kind of like strong convictions he yeah. has that might be slightly um, undiscovered yet really. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. maybe as as a character <laughs> like him grows older, he yeah. might find you know a more more self acceptance and therefore finding what yeah, he yeah. truly believes in. Yeah, it's also you, as you're touring cities, um, you're discovering different ways of orientating the city, which. Like you could discover a, sh a shy Newcastle, which isn't like yeah, yeah. Short, or you could, uh, I mean, yeah, or the shy London, or yeah, different yeah. ways. That we, I don't know if that's your identity too. But like we orientate around cities and like nations and histories, yeah, and the shy cons and like yeah, yeah. Um, yeah no, I found that with um, what's been interesting is I found a lot of parents bringing their shy children along, which yeah. has been interesting. And you can kind of sometimes, because I speak so closely yeah. to the audience and so directly to the audience, yeah. been able to like pick up on a few, and it's been really interesting. Yeah. Um, and the way you internalise that mother's voice. Yeah. And like, mm. yeah, it's like, yeah. it's almost like that. That mother voice is that sort of how much do I conform and how much do I be myself? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You feel the anxiety a bit. As soon as you started yeah. following me on yeah. Twitter with shy radicals, yeah. I was, I was stunned. Yeah. I was. I was amazed. I was like, because everything we, he talks yeah. about with shy comrades and the shy yeah. community, I was thinking, it's out there. Yeah. No, I wasn't. It's I wasn't also aware it's real. Like, I'm, yeah. I am actually that person. The way you described this guy in his thirties, that's exactly how my thirties <laughs> turned out. That's exactly how my college. Yeah, it's, it, the whole thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I am actually a shy activist. Like I am actually, <laughs> you know, in my imaginary cyber community of. Uh, yeah. I mean, my mind was blown. I yeah, was yeah. like, there's someone out there. And then I read about your story with yeah. your brother, and yeah. I, I was really moved by that. Yeah. And I think what you've, what you've been doing with your activism is, oh, is thank you. spot on. <laughs> I really support you. Thank you. Oh, that's really yeah. sweet. <laughs> um, yeah, just to do that. So this is like a black power salute. Yeah. And uh, this is a shy power salute, so it's a bit more like <laughs> um, Yeah, it's been really lovely to meet you. And um, mm. if you... Uh, if Shy Manifesto comes to your town, do actually go and see it. It's great, the direction is great, the lighting is great, the music is great, and you have a great person who carries the energy, this great manic depressive energy through the whole play. Um, and um, it also has an education program, so if you felt uh, subjugated or people don't understand you through, the, the high school experience is the, the worst, where everything else is behind, uh, do take your kids and your school to the education program.